I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! Hi, this is Michael Uslan. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Welcome to the Social Hour, a Batman on Film podcast, batman-on-film.com. This is episode number 158. Let's ride. Pete Vera. Pete Vera's riding again with me today. Let's ride. Two weeks in a row. Let's ride. All right. Let's ride. We're going to talk some Joker <laughs> 2 trailer. Joker fully, fully ado. Fully ado. Yeah. Sure. Whatever you want to call it. Joker 2 is <laughs> just easier. Yes, fully it ado. is. Yeah. Um, trailer dropped yes or last night actually uh, at about eight thirty mm. my time nine thirty your time and we got and that teaser right was it a teaser yeah the before? teaser was yeah it was early in the day uh, I like I, we I get think, teasers for trailers yeah That's my usually, favorite part of movies <laughs> yeah usually um, it's you know they drop them around eleven a.m. Pacific or something, you know, and then it's, um, well, uh, well, Justin Cinem and everybody on that side of the country have to wake up, you know, they're, they're four hours behind the rest of us. CinemaCon is taking place. And so, uh, there was a Warner brothers presentation last night. And I think that they were holding off, not dropping the trailer until mm -hmm. It played at CinemaCon, or at least I, I'm assuming they showed it at CinemaCon. Yeah, I, be, I believe they also showed showed Furioso stuff too. So uh, okay. they had their yeah. their big tent poles are out in effect. Yeah, and I think you had um, well, you had uh, of course Todd Phillips for Joker Two, and you had uh, they showed the logo for Superman, which we kind of okay. seen kind of before, but this is like the you know the not the we actually saw the logo on the suit, but this was the logo logo. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking any Superman today. I've talked enough about Superman for a while. You don't want to get angry don't, today? I don't <laughs> want to get angry. I don't want to get on any tangents. All right. So I'm just going to skip right over that. Uh, you mentioned the Mad Max prequel. Yes. Movie. Furioso. Uh, Furioso. And the Batman. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> whatever the uh the batman himself robert pattinson was there oh he was with, i did not know that okay cool yes not about the batman part two or the penguin but uh which they wouldn't have the penguin there because it's hbo or max whatever in the hell well, I'm getting, I'm just, pattinson was there remember when the internet thought he was getting fired yeah <laughs> like this. so Shit. i guess he that's was, not happening no he was there with the director of that um that sci-fi movie he's doing, they got pushed back, but they had a presentation for it. What's the name of it? Mm -hmm. Something. Uh, it skips my head at the moment. Yeah. The premise is he's like a clone and then there's in space. And then this, a, a new, a new version of him comes to take over every, uh, every, I don't know how often. And then, but this, you know, they just kind of die and a new one takes over. Although this time mm -hmm. he didn't, his his care his the main one of him i guess he's playing multiple versions himself the one doesn't isn't ready to die and so that's all right get the name of it i'll I'll come up with it here i'll do now, some good yeah i don't want to i'm gonna make sure i i gotta do right by the batman i don't want to and he's got we're gonna get pat so i didn't know he was actually filming yeah. a new movie so uh you know, oh, he filmed him. it uh, yeah it's been a while um hmm. since he's filmed it Something with a number. Let's see here. And what does the Google machine say? Mickey 17? Mickey 17, yeah. I knew there it was a Mickey name 17. and a number. Mickey 17. So he's, I guess, I'm this, assuming. 
is this one of those Mickey Mouse movies where they don't have the rights and then it's just kind of like, you know, no, they're just kind of no. doing it. It's none of that horse shit that no one's going to pay. I've said it now. Like, here we go down a tangent. I'm going on down a rabbit hole. <laughs> going um, down a tangent down in Texas. Don't worry about Batman going to public domain. It's not going to affect it. public domain Mickey Mouse. Actually, they already made that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to affect bat the mainstream batman as we know you're waiting for public um, domain robin that's what you're waiting for i, I yeah because i'm gonna write my book where i kill that son of a bitch for good <laughs> he, he falls with his parents during the trap he's at. yeah that's how you take care of it that's it they all they all freaking die there never that's is how i robin. envision john go. blake dying after it rises you know he, his grappling you know, gun doesn't work and he just falls <laughs> since it's since it's much since that love love rises i don't like john blake since that's a movie and yeah. and Nolan's, you know, his thing is always and even told me himself, it's it's how it ends is whatever happens after, it's up to you. I mean, yeah. no one I mean you can say like all the you know, smart asses will go, Well, he felt, you know, he got shot the first night or he fell. You don't know I like to say he, he fell off the top of the building. <laughs> no one knows what Bruce left for him. Training wise, where to go, who to seek out. It's not like I don't, you know. Who's he going to go seek out the league? <laughs> well, we know. Who knows? Who yeah, knows? I mean, he can he can start training. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's up. That's all. It, yeah, it's all up to interpretation. It's Rises to itself interpretation. is great. I just I don't like that John Blake is Dick Grayson personally. That's just my that's, personal oh, that's fanboy my, take. That's, but that's, that's really that's, it. That's my. He only is. Bread. He's the best Robin there ever was, and outside of Chris O'Donnell. On on the film screen. Well, I can't even say that because no. Burt Ward even no, had a just movie. Per- period. That's Robin. That's ah. version of Robin. That's how I like. That's if you want to do Robin, that's how you do Agree it. Agree to disagree. You bullshit with no. You know, I don't want some some twelve year old running around and freaking. Yeah, be twelve year old, but I mean, I'll, I'll take a high school. Oh, you just said on that you were talking the other day on the Facebook group. I I take me a t- eight twelve year old Robin. I mean, I'll do it. Yeah, you, you, I'm a fan. I don't care. Like it's Robin's Robin to me, whether he's eight or seventeen. You know, I get it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna lose me because you made Dick Grayson eight years old. <laughs> like, sorry, I, I, I read those books. It's not gonna. I don't want me. my. But I don't need people outside of uh, you know my crazy fandom. It might be a problem. I, I don't that. need. I don't need my Batman watered down or kitty fied up like they did in 1940 in Batman number one by or before Bat. You know. Before that, when they introduced Robin, before Batman number one, you know, he's, uh, what is it, Detective Comics 39, something like that? Uh, I I believe so. 39, 37, maybe, yeah, something like that. Uh, You know, Michael Michael Usland knows it all. He'll tell you a drop of a hat. Somebody on the internet is going to call us a fraud. I I pissed off a lot of people last week. So we got to find a way. We got to find a way to bring kids in the back. Pete, every time. You get me down on a, you get me on tangents. I, I know you plan. I got it no problem with it. That's what the people love. The people love it when you just shoot from the hip. Boop, 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 boop. Speak, speaking of interpretation. Yeah. And how you interpret a movie. Mm-hmm. That's one of the great things about Joker, Todd Phillips Joker that I liked is that it's just wide open to interpretation. You know? Yeah. The whole movie. Let me ask you. I don't know if I've ever asked you how, how much do you, your interpretation, how much of it was uh, delusions by Arthur Fleck and how much of it was it real? My take of the movie is it's essentially all his memory or his, he, I think he's in the asylum the whole time and this he's having like a therapy session. I think he did some of those things. I think some of the things aren't real, but I think it's all in his head. Like I think the whole movie is basically okay. like one big memory. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fair. And I, I'm not too far off. I think a lot of the things he did were probably or we saw him do in the movie, he didn't do. He's clearly in Arkham. Mm-hmm. Right. He ends up going to Arkham. He did something Joker wise, you know. Um so yeah, I, I anyway, that I don't think like there's some people like took it as like face value. The whole thing, everything happened. Period. In a discussion, there was no delusion, and that's fine. If you that's your interpretation, that's fine. Mine is, I think a whole lot of it 
was, you know, exaggeration of things that happened, things that didn't happen. You know, his whole with with the Zazie Beats character, you know, he never was in a damn relationship with her. And he. It's like yeah, like some of that stuff is definitely uh, in his brain, you know, and she didn't even know him except for just passing by and, you know, at the mailbox, whatever, in the apartment. Yeah, but I, I think he killed that big guy, though. You know, like when he was messing around with the with the tiny guy in his apartment. Yeah. I think that happened. I mean, what you're saying was Zazie's totally true. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know what threw him in jail. I want him to me, like my brain puts it together. as like he actually went on that show. He shot Robert De Niro. And that's why he went to Arkham. And they're like, well, why'd you do this? <laughs> you know? And yeah. then he's just kind of explaining things. He's probably some of that. I mean, isn't the whole point of the Joker? Like he doesn't even remember his origins. So like he may be lying to us. Like that's yeah. kind of the, like you said, the brilliance of so the does It takes a lot so of did So did he become a champion of all these people in Gotham as we saw at the end? Or is that something I, he just... I don't know. I don't know if that actually happened. <laughs> okay. And that's what's, that's the greatness of Joker. So when they mm. announced the sequel, I'm like, I don't want the answers to these questions. Maybe they're not even answers, though. Maybe it's just more questions. That's that's where I'm going. Okay. 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 That's where I'm going. So I watch the trailer, and then what's well, let me let me back back up a little bit. So first, I was like, ah, you don't need to have a sequel to this, man. You know, it was great. It was really yeah, great. Yeah, that's where I was. And, you know, and then that it was it's hard to rewatch, not because it's a bad movie, just because it's like so depressing sometimes. Yes. Yeah, it's it's not, you know, it's not in my rotation like the Dark Knight trilogy or Batman 89 and the Batman, but it but it is one of my favorite Batman inspired Batman universe movies. Mm -hmm. I will say that, you know. Um, so in fact, I got my, you know, they released that poster last week. Yes. I got me one. I got me one coming to hang on my okay. wall and my wall of Batman movie posters. So should be getting here that uh, hopefully by this week. Anyway. Um, so, but once I heard, well, we're going to cast Lady Gaga. She's going to be the female lead and it's going to be a musical. I was like, okay, I'm all in. And I'm not no even naysayers here. I'm not even a musical guy. I like Lady Gaga. Uh, I kind of became a fan of hers from really from um, Stars Born. You know, I, I knew her. Movie. I knew. <laughs> I absolutely love that movie. I I knew her music, of course. She's you know high, iconic, and she was on Howard Stern a few times back when I still listened to the Howard Stern show, and I thought she was great. And stars born, a star is born is fantastic. And then, you know, I've, I'll listen to her music. So I'm a fan of her as an actress as well. They cast her. I'm like, I'm in, I'm in on this. I like mm -hmm. Joaquin Phoenix. And I just felt like, okay, if they're gonna make a musical out of this. Then there's something kind of tells me. This is different. You had to have to do something different. And maybe it's something that just goes right along with the whole um ambiguity you know that we have yeah. here so yeah no i agree my whole thing honestly is this is really going to be a shot in the arm for the genre this is something totally different maybe totally different from the first one it's yeah. totally different from every single thing that has come before it um you know it's it, the fact that it's a musical is it, it it adds that new little bit of layer that's like oh, okay this is interesting this is going to be very different it, it's Todd Phillips really interests me because in a time where it seems like there's a lot of cookie cutting, he's really thinking outside the box. You know, it seems like jo the Joker and the Batman are the only two characters really kind of standing on their own and not having a bunch of other, you know, characters trying to support them. They're yeah. just focused on themselves. You know, the Batman's focused on that, that character, that world and Joker's focused on this. That's it. You know, it's, you know, the, the center point of these two universes is, is, uh, is those character are those characters. And so at, at a time where things are being very repetitive, this thing yeah. is breath of fresh air really is. Well, I have an op-ed coming that speaks to that. And I've said it, you know, it's just, it's based on what I've said before. I think, um, 
we need the genre needs Joker two. It needs the original Joker. It needs stuff like the Batman. And yeah. I'm not talking about just Batman characters. I want to see, I'd love to see more stuff um, with other DC characters, other Marvel characters, whatever. I don't, I don't need this cookie cutter shared universe, single narrative throughout 30 freaking films. Everything connects. Yeah. It's tired, man. Come on. It's tired. No, I'm with you. It, you know, uh, give me one guy who's got a focused idea, one story, three to four films onto the next guy. Like yeah. treat it. If you want to treat it like comic books, get a writer slash director arc. They're done with the arc. You move on to the next writer slash director. They got an arc. They do the arc and that's it. And you, that, that, that's what I would do if I was in charge um, is I would kind of take the Phillips Reeves approach story arc next person. That's, that's just it. That's me. I like, uh, I like what um, Christopher Nolan told him back a decade plus ago. Yeah. You know, yeah. it just, it's weird that uh, that didn't turn out to be a, a crazy idea. Did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> he, he kind of so, predicted the future there. Yeah. And Hey, I, there's other films that have came out, not recent that I would, put in that category of being different and you know more of a film film than the the cookie cutter shared universe popcorn type stuff logan is up there i the first deadpool i put in that category as well i think deadpool 3 is going to be interesting because we've seen stuff before multiverses pulling in other characters cameos char char cameos of characters from film series as long ago very curious to see what Deadpool does with the combination of Jackman and Reynolds and whether that uh, can rejuvenate the genre, even though we've seen it before. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting time right now. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, opinions, a lot of influx within the industry itself. Is, um, is this the first Deadpool film that's MCU? Yes. This is and it, technically it'll be the first MCU X-Men film as well. I yeah. with the inclusion of Wolverine. So it, it's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot riding on it. I didn't Especially see in the this. state of the MCU in general, like the MCU is kind of. We'll see. And know, then it cut that, 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 that takes away from the Deadpool uniqueness is now, Oh, we gotta, we gotta, now we gotta bring him into the MCU and it's gotta fit whatever. But I hundred percent count Deadpool. Um, the original as being one of these unique, you know, kind of different films. And I'm not talking about everything has to be R rated or PG, a hard mm -hmm. PG 13 and dark and serious. There's a way to do stuff unique. That's that could be PG 13. And it's, it, it's geared to a, you know, a wider spread of all mm -hmm. it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be. You know, I, I'm going to be honest, like even the whole shared universe thing that I know Warner brothers, DC wants it so badly, but like, I'm if they like I'm fine with them doing it. I know they want to do it. Uh, that, that's okay. But my whole thing is just timing. I just think right now, you, I, I, I said before when we talk about Joker and Batman, different, be different. You know, just doing the MCU with DC characters is uh, I I wouldn't tempt that right now, personally. But no, that's what no. they're going to do. So I watched this trailer. I watched it a few times, believe it or not, and. Uh, my fears of it wiping away or, you know, being a albatross on what I experienced watching Joker are gone. I, I firmly believe that that ambiguous viewer, the viewer's interpretation will continue. And throughout this film, and it will not affect the previous film at all. Um, it, it, I'm already getting the vibe of like, okay, this thing's, it's a whole thing in Arkham. And, the, you know, are they? I wouldn't know, be surprised. You know, um, are they just, do? are they imagine? You know, she says, you know, she says, let's get out of here. Okay. There's in no the way trailer, that's Harley, <laughs> you know, do they actually get out? It, honestly, like, for me, just from watching the trailer, 
it almost looked like Harley wasn't an inmate, but she was like part of like, I don't know, like a carolers group who came in to sing to the inmates. Maybe Arthur just sees her and then his imagination goes crazy. I don't know. That's a, that's a horrible fan theory. But like, I don't really know what the movie's about, but there's some scenes where you see them out in public. You see Harley out in public, but like, I'm kind of with you. I don't think that stuff's necessarily real. I think a lot of this is going to be fabricated in his brain. But I think a lot of the first movie was fabricated too. Uh, so like, I'm like, that's kind of what you expect. The Joker's kind of Joker. The Joker movies seem to be like the Shutter Island of comic book films, right? Yeah. Like, what's really going on here? Yeah. Like, well, you know, like at times in Shutter Island, you think Leo's an actual detective, and then other times you're like, oh, he's the inmate. They're letting him play a game. You know, like yeah. There, there's a little bit of that going on there here as well. I, I do. I will say that. Just from watching the trailer, my take on Harley is that she's not a doctor. She's a, she's an inmate with him. And I don't think she's a doctor either. I talked about it a little hour, but no, we don't. And, think. and you know, the whole shared madness. I think they're both inmates. I think they're both, you know, in there Maybe. for psychological, you know, it's fully a do is shared madness, shared, shared craziness. So it could, you know, it could be a combination of her and him both what their delusions are throughout and we don't you know what if it's actually all her what if it's all from her point of view well that's a nice little twist right you know like yeah she sees him he's kind of maybe maybe he maybe the de niro part's actually true maybe he actually shot there on television right just just our and they just walk past each other always our discussion about this trailer this two minute and 20 second trailer whatever it Mm. was that it speaks to the genre needing things like this because I'm trying to analyze a two minute plus trailer and having forming these theories. And I want to see what they, what they do here. I want to see how, you know, they didn't, they teased us a little bit with the musical numbers because we don't, mm-hmm. we don't, we don't see. I would, be, I would love it if they saved it all. You know, they don't, we, we didn't see them sing or dance, they a little dancing, but it seems, you know, there's some cut back and, you know, you see them dancing like they're just regular Arthur mm-hmm. and Harley. And then it's it's all very, um, you know, uh, surreal that, you know, full Joker, full Harley dancing, you know, uh, was it uh, Arkham Hotel yeah. or Hotel mm-hmm. Arkham? Whatever. I saw that. Saw that. Yeah. It's going to be so very I, practical. I, yeah. What did you think about the just in general, just. I'm hooked. I'm ready. Like, trailer. It was, yeah. It, it, to me, this was this is the only trailer I need. Yeah. I, I don't need anything else. Like this is it got everything. Like, I saw Gaga in action. I saw emotion. I saw you know. I I saw Joaquin Phoenix and his just his creepy, slender, just kind of like walk. Like, I'm hooked. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm at the point right now where this movie makes a ton of money and people are like, "Wow, Joker Two is really something." I'm at the point where I'm like. Is, is Todd Phillips eventually going to get a Batman? Like, is he going to, like, what, if everything in this universe is all, like, kind of in your head, right? We don't know what's real or what's not. Like, who's to say Bruce Wayne doesn't have grandeurs of becoming Batman, right? It, what if there's a whole Batman movie that he's thinking? I, I don't know, but I'm almost at the point where I'm like, I think he's almost earned the right to say, walk into Warner Bros. Like, I have this idea. It includes Batman. What are you going to do? And if this is, if Black Label's a thing, like, I've been told it's a thing yeah. it shouldn't be an issue, right? Hey, y'all. It's Bill Ramey, founder of Batman on Film. Let's take a quick pause in this podcast for these words from our sponsor. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. But I would assume that Warner Brothers wants to be in the Todd Phillips business. Clearly. Uh, Clearly. I would... I would welcome anything DC that he would want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it comes to Batman, I just don't want to, con- you know, conflict with Reeves, what Reeves is doing. I don't care if it conflicts the Brave and the Bold because I couldn't care less about that. They can, but but they, I mean, I mean, it'd be interesting possibly having two black label Batmans and it's just, you know, for a while we were worried about too I mean, much I, Batman. I'm just I'm I'm throwing out hypotheticals, but. It, I think if the movie does really well and he comes into that office, I, you have to I, listen to him. I think you, I think he would, 
I would if this does just as well as the first one, then clearly I would say they would want to do another one, a third. Mm -hmm. And I think Todd Phillips, I think if he did anything else with this Joker, it would be a third Joker film. And maybe it would include that that imaginary delusional Batman. version of Batman. But it yeah. would be a, it'd be under it would be a Joker film, not a solo Batman film. That that, that that's know? fine. I just my whole thing is if this thing is a success and he comes into Warner Brothers with a pitch, I'll be damned if you don't listen to the man. Honestly, oh, yeah. yeah. How do you not listen to him? You give you, <laughs> other directors have failed pitched ideas and you've made their movies. <laughs> this guy's delivered two. Let's say he delivers two billion dollar hits. How would you say no to him? Yeah. If, if, if he comes at you with a Green Lantern idea, how do you say no to him? And Jen, I don't care what the character is. Yeah. You got to give him a shot. He can come in there. He's like, hey, I got this great idea for, uh, uh, I don't know, a stretch guy movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're going to say yes. He can literally come up with anything at this point. I think he's I mean, the right to, you know. All right. He did his two billion. You get he's one. Done, he's done comedy. Oh, Due Date is one of my favorite movies. You know, of time. he's done comedy. So, wouldn't you? I mean, what about a you know a DC R-rated DC superhero edgy comedy under Tom if, Phillips? If, if that's what like he a, wants to do, yeah, by so be it. Let him. Do, if he wants to direct a mixopolitic movie because it's zany and funny and whatnot, go for it. I don't care. Whatever he wants yeah. to do, as long as if Joker two is a success, the man can do whatever he wants. Yeah, I, I, I think this. I think it's who else has be done back to back yeah. billion dollar movies. Let's say if it works outside of Nolan, DC wise, has anyone done that? DC wise, not that I can recall. Right, because I think you have the only options really are Snyder Jenkins. I don't know anybody. Oh, on, DC. Right? This, one. Just talking DC yeah. comic book characters. I don't. I think Nolan no. is the only director to do it. One had one billion dollar movie. Snyder didn't have any, and Wonder Woman didn't reach one billion. Yeah, and we know what happened in '84. So yeah, like he yeah. he's in very rare territory. Yeah, if it happens, I mean, I could even see uh, with with the Elseworlds banner that I hope sticks around. This could force I mean, its hand. I mean, you could. You would get, I just, this is how you get filmmakers. I mean, you could even get Tim Burton back, have some, you can imagine Tim Burton doing. For, oh, you know, I don't you know, know. I don't know. A, you ever hear Tim bat? Burton talk about his comic book days? <laughs> no, but just, you don't, it's just like, you don't have to have played football to be a great football coach. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't yeah, have I mean, to have if Tim Burton wants to come back for Dead Man, I'm all for it. But so like, yeah, if he know, did I, Dead Man or, well, isn't kind of, I guess, Beetlejuice is kind of dead man. He's a demon, though, isn't he? He's not really. Is he a ghost dead or a man, demon? He's a, dead man's a poltergeist. Okay. I'll go uh, poltergeist. So, uh, but like Tim Burton, wouldn't Tim Burton talk about uh, what's the the imp? Superman imp. I can't. Mixoplectic. 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 Okay. Yeah. Him, like a team up movie with him and Batmite. Tim Burton style. Oh, someone's on the Batmite train all of a I just, sudden now. I, you want to do a black label film like that? That's Tim Burton. I mean, that can mm. you just see his style doing something like that? Yeah, I mean, I, Joker. The Joker franchise opens up a lot of possibilities. It proves it'll prove that there's room for this. Excuse me, black label label. It'll prove that the audience is interested in something that's out of continuity as long as it's done well. Um, you know, I, I think that's that's another thing. Um, you know, this may be this may be the thing that we need to kind of push the genre. Maybe this inspires other filmmakers to you know, say, "Hey, look, I know you got this incontinuity thing, not my jam." Reeves Phillips guy, yeah. I yeah. got an idea. Maybe one or two movies, and then I'm out. Uh, you know, like I don't know how many of these guys want to be contracted for a long time anymore. You know, like I, it's I'm curious. Like, you sign a contract for with the DCU. Like, what do you like? You're signing up for the next 10, 15 years what? of your life. Like. Maybe I don't know. Maybe people think things get like that get stale or whatnot. I'm not sure. I just I'm very you know I, I don't know how to read these things anymore. They, they don't. Sometimes the cookie cutter but, gets in the way of. Passion. I mean, this is this should be obvious, but I mean, from the quotes I've read from from filmmakers who said I d I don't want to 
I don't want to do an MCU film. I don't want to do a shared universe film is that it's, it's creatively stifling. And I've said that for mm-hmm. years and years because you're, 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 no matter how much creative freedom you get, you're still, still restricted. You're still beholden to whatever, whatever overarching story that's being told throughout all these films. You still are under uh, having to count for what has happened before in other films that has nothing to do with yours and what's happening after in films that have nothing to do with this one. So I just, I, I, you, I think filmmakers like Nolan and Reeves and uh, Todd Phillips and others are more inclined to do something that would be under the, under this, uh, you know, Elseworlds banner. Mm -hmm. I think 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 the the difference is, I think you get create real creative people, higher upper echelon filmmakers who want to come in for a short stay. But I think the problem is the MCU creates these fake, horrible directors like the Russo brothers who have no talent, who are hacks, all their movies fail outside of the MCU. And then, you know, it's, it's weird. It kind of gives what it takes. Like I could see somebody wanting to do an MCU type shared universe thing to try to build up their career, get their foot in the door and then take it from there. But I, I, I don't, Sometimes it doesn't work out, you know, like sometimes these guys are too coddled and they, uh, they, you know, Feige yeah. just does wonders. Yeah. So back to the trailer, I thought it was a great trailer overall. Um, it felt like the original film quite a bit. I, I'm always, uh, astonished how skinny Joaquin Phoenix looks and how he, how much he, skinny he gets for this part. Because you seem who is skinnier, just... uh, Phoenix in this movie or Bale for what was it, the Machinist? Bale, Bale. Bale. Like, <laughs> was, did, what was Bale at? Like zero percent body fat? I <laughs> mean, unlike LL oh my, <laughs> he was like, uh, I mean, barely over a hundred pounds. I don't know how he, I don't know how he made it through that. To be honest, that's he, that's almost I like read, being, <laughs> killing yourself. He ate well, it literally. He ate an apple a day. That was it, and then drank coffee. That was it. Black coffee, I imagine. Jeez. Sure. Damn. Yeah. That's he it. must have been so wired. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you like you imagine him being hangry and on coffee? Like we've all heard the clip from Terminator 3. Yeah. Oh, man. Bale's a monster. <laughs> so it was just what the hell, Mick G? <laughs> and he went, yeah, he went from that to to Batman, Batman begins. And had to gain all that weight. You know, and I, I'll never bigger. I believe this is on the uh, begins DVD special features. At one point, I think they're doing. If you and if you you see if you look at this scene, you'll notice it. It's the scene where like he's he's trained on the top of the pillars and he's kind of doing the balancing thing. Like you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. He's very chunky in that scene, and I believe one of the stunt guys said. Or said to him, was like, hey, uh, you know, we're doing Batman, not Fat Man over here. Yeah. So he had to lose a little bit of weight while in production for Begins because he gained too much. But got, I think it works out for the movie because yeah. and that Bruce Wayne should be a little chunkier, I think, while he's training. Like, it just realism. Suck at, suck at Kowalski. I would say that, I don't know, chunky is the word, but he was he, maybe a little... Compared to the was, rest of the movie? <laughs> he was he was jacked up for that. He got big for that movie, but he did. He was he, big, man. He even said that he had to, uh, he had to, once he reported, he had to lose like 10 pounds so the suit would fit, you know? Because he had gained, he was eating like a, just eating, 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 and lifting weights and training and and whatnot. I'm sure it was a mixture of wanting to be bulked up for Batman and just the glory of having food. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Can you imagine being stuck with just an apple for months on end? How long? You got to... You can't just do that for a month. You know, do an apple and coffee for a month. Dude, I can't do it for an hour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for he had to do that for several months before he even started filming that movie. I hope he got $40 million for that movie minimum. Well, that's when... <laughs> right? He probably, like, he probably, that's before he, he was really big, big. Dude, you know, if, you're gonna, got, if I got to put my life on the line for work, $40 million. <laughs> like start then, he got, then he got skinny again for... Uh, the fighter. We play that crackhead. That was it. That was a great role. Okay, I don't oh, think I saw great. that one. You didn't see the. Fi- oh man, you got to see that. He was. Yeah, that, he's great. did he? Didn't he do a movie with Jill and Hall when they were boxers? Yeah. Or yeah. No. It, 
Who's that with? That's with uh Is it the fight? What is that movie? He's in it with gotta, uh, I'll check the IMDb page. Mark Wahlberg is in it with him. Oh, okay. Is it the fight? I, I still know what the name of the movie is, but right, I'll check it out. Point is, look- Bale's the man. <laughs> he's been the man since he was in Shaft, let's be honest. Oh, he's been the man. And that movie that movie was before its time. You had he's- you had Nick Fury, Batman, and the Watcher, Commissioner Gordon, all in one movie. <laughs> he's uh let's see. Oh, man. Uh, Shaft. That's where I first discovered uh, Jeffrey Wright was Shaft. Pete yeah, the fighter. It. The fighter. Okay. It. It's Mark Wahlberg and it's their brothers. Yeah, that's a good flick. Well, I'm I'll check that out. Just... Three Ten to Yuma is great. I love Three t- I th- I think that came out right after Begins and I was kind of on the bail train. So I was like, let me check this out. Russell Crowe's in it with Batman. So American yeah, Hustle. I like 310 to Yuma. Okay, he and he gained weight for American Hustle. He gained uh, American, weight for American Hustle. I thought was really boring. I didn't like that one. I know it got a lot of acclaim, but I mean, they, I oh, I really it. liked it. Yeah, he gained weight for he was thin and uh, or no, he was not thin. He was he was he got big for uh, uh, vi- uh, Vice. Was it Vice or VP? You know, when he played. Uh, okay. Oh, he didn't he do J. Edgar Hoover too? No, he didn't do Jay Ogre. That was uh, did, that was Leo. Who did that one? Was that Leo? Okay, yeah, but he did. Okay, oh maybe that's why I got the two of them confused there. Yeah, he did Dick Cheney. I knew yeah. somebody. I, knew, I thought, and he didn't wear a fat suit. Impressive. No, I just that dude just you know, he goes all he goes he does it for real. Imagine know? being his like I don't know digestive system. It must be crazy. Now, he has said he's not doing <laughs> he's not going to do drastic weight loss or weight gain anymore. Anyway. Let's finish up here. We uh, really went on a, a Nolanite rant there. Yeah, that's good. I'm going Give a good all day. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, if you didn't live through those times, sucks to be you. <laughs> so this is what, just to finish up, uh, this is what Todd Phillips had to say about Joker 2 and the musical aspects. And uh, he says, I'd like to say it's a film where music is an essential element. To me, that doesn't veer too far from the first film. Arthur's weird and aloof and all these things, but he had music in him. He has a grace to him. That informed a lot of the dancing in the first film. It didn't feel like that big of a step here. It's different, but I think it'll make it'll make sense when you see it. So that's that's I said Sounds bingo. Like evolution. <laughs> it's bingo. It's it's and I think he was asked something about how is this a why is it a musical? Is it so much different in the first film? And he's saying well, not really, because he's a nut job. He's weird. He's aloof. He imagines stuff. He has, and he had a whole. Da- he had like two dance numbers. <laughs> yeah, and he had so, that one in the bathroom and on the stairs. It makes sense because it just the music adds to me. It just adds to the surreal. Uh, ima- you know, is it delusional aspect of this whole thing? You know, do we know uh, how much time has passed since the first movie? I do not. Okay, looks, I, just, I wasn't sure if he, that was a thing. He looks exactly like he did. Yeah, it could be. It could take so uh, take off right from where the last one left yeah, off. Yeah, I would imagine not not too much time has gone in between. So, uh, and that was from that that quote goes to ew.com. They had a little article uh, on. Uh, his uh, CinemaCon appearance. And he talks more about Lady Gaga as well. So you can check that out. You can go to Batman on film and uh, I link to it from there. So yeah, I'm all in and I'm like you, I don't need another trailer for this. Uh, To be honest, post BVS, I'm at the point where I'm like one and done, you know, tease me, you know, Hey, it's coming. Here it is. And then if you want to do a bunch of TV spots, go, so be it. I don't want to. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Like I'm not going to miss much. But I do not need like four or five minute trailers. Please don't do that. It's too much. I was just about to say, I I I kind of walk out of curio- curiosity. You know how they'll release, you talk about a five minute trailer, they'll release one of those vignettes from movies, you know. Mm-hmm. I can totally see them releasing one of these musical numbers. I don't need to see it, but I'm just saying I bet they do. You know, yeah, there's I, I, I if in order to 12 draw or, in people who don't know, then yeah, I would make yeah. that make sense. If there's 12, 13, or 14 musical numbers in here, 
I, I, I would imagine one of them they're going to put out, you know, for sure. I'm very curious to see what happens comes October, just where this, where these TV spots will be placed. I wonder if they'll, I, I'm, if it's before, oh, do we have a release date? I'm just curious. I don't remember if it was, we got a release oh, Joker? date. Joker? Yeah. Yeah, October 4th. Okay, so this is well before the world. I was curious how the World Series would play, and maybe they used the World Series to try to market it, knowing more people would watch. You know, maybe, you know, uh, but it seems to be very early in the playoffs. I was curious. So marketing, I was I was getting that there, but interesting. NFL, right, uh, NFL Sunday. NFL yeah, I'm Sunday, I imagine it's going to be plastered all because what? That's like week, because football starts in like what, September? Starts like the second week of se- second weekend of September. So it'll be mid season by then. So you'll see it all over on Sundays. So you yeah. got a, uh, you have about three weeks of NFL before. I can see this week. getting like some kind of studio thing on Fox to do some special thing. Hey, look, here's the first five minutes Joker, right? Like they, they've yeah. done stuff like that. So uh, trying to get people involved. I'm just thinking of like, what do mass amounts of people watch? Who is that you could just kind of get the, the word across. Oh, we finish up here. Who's the target audience for this? Because it's I, it's it's all over yeah, the place to me. It's, it's uh, I'd say it's sure. not it's not it's not diehard comic young comic book geeks. You know, no, because um, it's such a departure from the source. But yeah, right. they'll go see it. But yeah, they'll go see. They'll, it they'll say they will They'll they'll well. It'll be, I, it's. You know, it's not comic book accurate. I only want comic book accurate stuff. Um, like Batman falling from the moon with a snorkel and landing geez. on Earth. Get me, get me started again. I'm not, no tangents, no tangents. Uh, but I mean, you look, that Lady Gaga edition is going to inject a whole different crowd yeah, of it's, audience. <laughs> this, it's probably not the best example, but it's kind of like, adding the Taylor Swift audience to the Travis Kelsey audience. Like, you know, like once the two of them merge together, it's kind of like, Oh, okay. And now you've got this kind of like unstoppable force. Well, once you bring Lady Gaga into the comic book realm, uh, you're bringing in two really unique audiences, you know? Well, look how many, look how many of those uh, Twilight patent Twilight fans. Yeah. They made the the, Batman, the, the, the move over to our side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting Batman at the time now. because the whole patents and Twilight thing, I never watched Twilight, so I had no idea what the hell this glowing vampire thing everyone was making fun no of. No idea. I just no knew he clue. was in it. Yeah, but I was like, this guy looks creepy. He could be Bruce Wayne. Um, but I was like, this was the first real time that I experienced as a fan where Batman had an already existing huge fan base. The Affleck fan base kind of came afterwards. The whole Batfleck thing. It wasn't necessarily before his appearance. No, there, there was, was after with all yeah, the drama. There's no, there's no big Affleck fan base. Well, you know? it, it happened out after and all the, the, the you know, long live Batfleck, whatever the hell that thing well, was. Well, that, yeah. That, you know, it was all post him getting the role. This is yeah. all pre. Like, yeah. I, I can't think of an act. Like, I'm pro- probably the biggest actor at the time of getting the role of Batman would have to be Val Kilmer, right? Like, I would say he probably had the biggest fan following. He was kind of a sex symbol, Top Gun, all that jazz. Like compared to Pattinson, like I think Kilmer would be the only guy who would have a built-in audience. I would say Michael Keaton was more popular. Okay, o- over okay. a over the, a general audience mm-hmm. point of view than Kilmer because of. But, the key, uh, but Keaton was met with. Well, I mean, I guess Pattinson was widespread negativity when it was announced. And he I was, don't know if Kilmer was. You'd have to tell me. I, I was too young. Negative. Yeah, oh, like was Kil- when Kilmer was cast. Did anyone oh, say Kilmer? Anything? I, would uh, I was thinking Keaton. No, there was Keaton you know, cast was the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, the thing with Kilmer was he was hot off of. Uh, uh, was it Heat? No, that was after Batman Forever. Um, Tombstone. Okay, Tombstone. yeah, like that's what I said. Like, Kilmer was on a he was on a roll from top, yeah, to like, yeah, yeah, to, like, yeah. Batman Tomb- Forever was part of that, like his 90s run is pretty good, yes. Batman Forever is part, definitely part yeah. of um, uh, you know, Tombstone, uh, Top Gun. Well, the car Top Gun was what about 10 years before Batman Forever? Top Gun was 86, I believe, when yeah. it came out, 86, yeah, late 80s. And you know, he's but he's a you know, he was he, he, he was he's a 
he's a thespian. You know, he's one of those who do small and do weird roles and stuff like that. So, but yeah, but like, come on, like, who doesn't want to be Batman? He's, he's yeah, it's yeah. Kilmer like, and Bale have a lot of uh, similarities. Keaton was yes, uh, Keaton, and so does Pattinson. I would flop those three in together: Pattinson, Bale, and, and yeah, and Kilmer. Uh, yeah, they're the same type of actor, I'd and, say. And almost, and almost, I would almost include Clooney because Clooney does a lot of different things. He's a heck of, I, I mean, I, he's good. Post Batman, Clooney, I think, has done a lot. Of, I think for Clooney, Batman was part of the journey up the mountain. Yeah, like he real. I think Clooney knew what he had to do to get where he is now. And I mean, like you said, yeah. like Batman Robin, he does not regret doing it. He, you know, yeah. there's things he regrets about that movie, but doing the role is, is not one of them because it, it took his career to new places. But uh, I mean, he was a TV star. I don't, I wouldn't even say Clooney was a movie star until well. He done. Uh, he had did the uh, from dusk to dawn. Yeah, that's what. That's why Joel cast him, and that's not it, the Batman. He, he yeah, jo <laughs> Joel drew the 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 Batman Cal on on his. His, his picture of, uh, from dust till dawn yeah a seth greco so, yeah gecko but yeah Very i just greco, you know like with with keaton he was big man he's you know you had mr bomb mr bomb was big and and mm -hmm. uh you know gung-ho and he got all these movies night shift that is one of, it's it's one of my favorite i watched keaton that recently it's great oh, it's henry winkler fantastic movie. yeah it's great so but he was big michael and that was part of the why okay the reason the reason why it was such an outrage is because people, you he's know, a well -known it was like, comedian. it was, yeah. You know, he was, did stand up. That's how he came to be, you know, and he got in the movies and that he'd done clean and sober right before Batman, you know, mm -hmm. but he was big, but he's, but his bigness was out of uh, comedy, comedy actor, you know, people couldn't wrap I mean, their head I, around. Did Beetlejuice come out the year before 89? Beetlejuice, right? Beetlejuice yes. 88? Yeah, so that I'm sure that didn't help. <laughs> and, as you know, good as that we, movie was, and as everybody loved it, I'm sure it didn't help. And it's it's not like he's he's not like Mr. Mom and Beetlejuice. That's pretty. That was a little. He's actually control. pretty creepy in Beetlejuice. Yes, <laughs> he can make it actually thinking about it. Like he kind of make a good Joker. <laughs> he would. It's, Beetlejuice is kind of jokery. There's a lot of Batman act. I think I'd say Bale, Keaton, Pattinson. Could also play the Joker. What about uh, the the internet's favorite Willem Dafoe? He could. Uh, we, we always see the memes pop up of Willem as the Joker. Well, he was almost a Joker. He yeah. was considered at one time. <laughs> He's a hell of an actor, Willem Dafoe. Ah, great Green Goblin makes no way great. home. The movie it is fantastic. He's great in the Lighthouse with you know with Batman. It's all connected. He's in the Lighthouse with Robert Pattinson. See how it's all connected. Yeah, I told, hey, look, Shaft. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, Jeffrey yeah. Wright and Christian. There you Bell. go. Yeah, there you go. All right. I, some, I, I will. This is a tangent filled. This uh, tangent filled episode. Tangent filled, rabbit hole filled. Uh, Not really album. witty banter, but tangent filled. There's been some really good, really really good actors who've played Batman. Pat Adam West doesn't get enough credit for an actor. Like he was a very good yeah. actor, well respected actor. A good actor, but not. He's not an actor like Bale, who does all these different roles and, you know, is a chameleon. Um, but yeah, you know, yes, Adam West was great. He's great. He was great for. We've been for, very for fortunate. Batman. We have. Been. Yeah, but I'm talking like top notch actors to get Pattinson to get. Keaton's a great actor. Keaton is really good. Uh, yeah. Val Kilmer is a great actor. Even uh, and Affleck in BBS was brilliant. Like he he was the best part of that movie. You know, like I got to give him credit. Brilliant. I wouldn't go that far. I thought he did. I really love his Bruce Wayne, even though it's I think kind of dark. I, I've I've said this, and I get on a BOF um, BOF a BVS tangent. Uh, I will get on a BOF tangent. Um, I tell you, I started BOF on a web TV back in nineteen. 98 ever tell that story anyway i thought it was rachel who started and you just tagged along no no i'll sure? tell that story go watch it go listen to that episode of the, I, I got the i got Chronicles. that news from a guy from mesquite so maybe it was wrong oh sob so i hey made me lose my train of thought no i'll say <laughs> affleck i thought that was one of his best 
performances that he had given in a, in any film. Yeah. It's something it's, it's definitely one of his best performances. Yeah. But I, I don't think he's not an actor and this is I think he's a I think he's a, a top-notch director and I hope I see him go back to doing that stuff but I think that he is he's not on the level of, of Pattinson and Bale and Kilmer or Keaton. Uh, maybe I, I I I'll agree to that. Yeah, he's not as good of an actor. He's and that doesn't mean he's also not as bad of an actor as everyone says he is. I remember, you know, no, no, his no. casting he's... was met with controversy as well. No, he was. Yes, people conveniently forget that there was a they big fly, like, the, the yeah. same people who like to the hashtag their brains out. Yes. All right. All right. That's going to do it for this tangent filled uh, social hour. I'm gonna let How's Pete... the weather? How's your weather? Here we go. It's been raining. Oh, got a little Texas heat up here on the East Coast. No, it's been raining, but other than that, the temperatures have been, it's been, you know, 50s, low 60s in the morning, and it's barely gotten to 80s. Barely. I don't know if it's even gotten to 80s yet. Maybe a couple times. I know what's coming, though. I know what's coming here very shortly. Right. Well, we got some beautiful the, weather. Wait till late, late June, July, August, and then. It's three months of hell. All right. I want you to plug. Uh, if you want to find me socially, if I haven't pissed you off already, you could find me on Twitter and Instagram at Pete Illustrated. Uh, I have two podcasts. I have a news-based podcast that covers all the fanboy news you can want. Straight out of Gotham, straight underscore O underscore G uh, on Twitter and Instagram. I do that with a champion of Long Island, Eric Holzman, who has just come back to the States after plowing the fields of the UK. Okay. Uh, you could also... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold H O D E. Hold on. Okay. Hold One on. word H H O D E O N. Hold on. That's official Texan, by the way. Yes, sir. Um, what was what was Eric? It was vacation. Uh, Eric not... mixes business and pleasure often, so it's a little bit of both. Okay. He's a party animal. The ladies love him. He knows all the hot cocktails in town. He's 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 he's, he's a traveling with... fiesta. He tore up London, huh? Just tore right through there. Oh, he painted the town holes. Wow. Okay. He's a legend. He, like, I'm, I'm just lucky enough to be in his presence sometimes. Is he, is he now the champion of uh, the UK? Or he's pretty sure he's going to take over the world. At one point, we might call him King Holzman. <laughs> All right. And con- then the Jets will win a Super Bowl. <laughs> Continue. Uh, if you like Spider-Man, I have a, a Spider-Man themed podcast, the Italian Spider-Man Coalition. We just dropped a new episode. Uh, you can follow that on Twitter at Spidey Coalition. I'm all over Batman on film, Batman on uh, film.com, Batman on film, YouTube. And I appear monthly on Ryan Lauer's The Batman Book Club. So uh, check that out as well if you aren't doing it, if you want to recap all your Batman uh, monthly comic books. All right. For me, Batman-on-film.com. I'm, we're getting really cranked up here on Joker 2. With far as our coverage is concerned, you know, and we'll be doing that till it comes out in October. And lest we forget, the next chapter of the Batman saga will soon be upon us this fall with the Penguin. It's got. It's got. I'm. I'm. I'm leaning now post Joker. Joker's the fourth. I'm thinking you give it two weeks, and then we get some Penguin. I think whatever it comes out, it will be it'll start and finish before the end of 2024. It'll be done before the end of 2024. It will not lead into it will not bleed into 2025. I'll agree to that. I think that's a good so eight weeks. Take. So we're done eight weeks. So you got kind of got what? End of you know, you got November, December for sure. But if you want to back it up a little bit when you come out like very end of October. There's no way it goes there because New Year's. Yeah. So it'll be done before in, December. Like end of, end of October. And then finish up in December before the first of the year. Yeah. Sounds good. You know, Curb just it, ended. So HBO needs a new show. Okay. On something. Let me ask you <laughs> real quick before we go. Would, are you going to, would you watch another trailer for the penguin? Uh, is it a lo- No, I wouldn't. No. I'm not, trailer, okay. no, not at this point. Okay. What if they I would watch a TV of, spot only if I was watching a ball game and it popped up. What if they release one of those, you know, eight minute, eight minutes from the the uh, first episode of the Penguin? 
Uh, you'll find it on Straight of Gotham, but I won't watch it. I'll just okay. wait for the show. That's it. Okay. All right. If they released them all at one time, like Netflix, would you binge them all back to back to back to back, back to back times, you know, all the way through eight, eight episodes? Uh, I'd probably go until I fell asleep. Okay. Do you like the where you can just binge or do you prefer when they release stuff weekly? You have to wait. I prefer weekly because somebody will be crazier than me and just watch the whole thing and I don't want to see a spoiler. Yeah. Like Justin will watch it just to ruin it for me. I know he I know that's his style. As much as I I have been stuff once it came out, mm-hmm. like Mrs. Maisel I did and then this last season of Fargo, because I forgot it came out. I um when I got into Miss Maisel, I binged all the seasons except for the last one because but I like it coming out weekly because you get that anticipation. Oh, this is coming out on Monday night yeah, or look Tuesday forward to night. It. Yeah, exactly. All right. Announcer Rachel will finish up here. We'll catch you next time. You have been listening to the BOF Social Hour, Jet's official podcast on Batman on Film. Follow BOF on threads at the Batman on Film. Follow BOF on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Batman on Film. To help keep BOF up and running, go to patreon.com slash Batman on Film, or you can buy BOF a beer at buymeacoffee.com slash the real Batman on Film. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel, authoritative, definitive, the original Batman on Film, founded in 1998. Say goodbye, Graceland.